Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about vision transformers. Vision transformers is a very old model, but I thought I would just record it because, uh, you know, it is one of those basic initial models which showed that you can actually use transformer models also for vision tasks. So what is vision transformer model? Well, it's a model which basically motivates the usage of transformer for vision tasks. Many, many other models have now come up which basically use this as the base backbone. So uh, this is the standard architecture of a vision transformer model. It is also called as VIT popularly, right? Uh, so the idea is that for any kind of vision classification tasks, for example, let's say image classification tasks, you take the image, you split it into fixed size patches. So you take the full image, you split it into, let's say here, three by three, so nine different patches. And then, you know, once you have these patches, small little patches, you essentially have an MLP layer, a dense layer, so as to linearly embed them into, uh, you know, into embeddings. Right? Uh, these can be called as visual embeddings. Now, on top of these patch visual embeddings, you also add position embedding. So these are just one-dimensional position embedding, indicating the position, uh, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, in this particular case, up to 8. Uh, uh, you know, up, yeah, well, I mean, 1 to 9 uh, in this particular case as position embeddings for each of those patches. Now, typically you also prepend a special uh, token in the beginning called as a CLS token, just like you do in standard transformer encoder models, right? Uh, and then you feed it to a transformer encoder. At the end, you of course have an MLP head so as to essentially do classification task. Um, at pre-trained time, they basically have an MLP head with just one hidden layer. Uh, while at fine tune time, you essentially can uh, just connect, uh, uh, you know, uh, just connect uh, uh, the transformer encoder CLS representation directly to the output layer, right? So that's that. Now, um, the, the transformer encoder, each of those layers is a standard layer. It basically contains the multi-head self-attention, also contains the feed forward, uh, you know, several of those layers. Um, and that's basically the overall model architecture, a very simple model architecture in today's world, but this is basically the basic of uh, all kinds of uh, uh, you know transformer based vision models okay. so to pretrain this model the vit model they basically use three different kinds of data sets and therefore come up with three different uh, kinds of models so imagenet 1k imagenet 21k so imagenet 1k is the standard imagenet data set with 1000 classes imagenet 21k is with 21000 classes and also the jft data set okay. Uh, they further they actually train three different vit models of different sizes base model large model and huge model so which of course differ in terms of the number of layers in them uh, they also of course they also differ in terms of the hidden dimension of the transformer encoder uh, that is used here and in terms of the mlp size head and so on so overall you know the huge model has uh, uh, three, 632 million uh, parameters while the vit based model actually has 86 million parameters this is pretty much comparable to the bird based model the vit based model now, uh, uh, VIT models typically have this notation, VIT L slash 16. Now, that typically means it's a large model, so L stands for large. And 16 basically stands for the 16 cross 16 input patch size. So if you have an image, you basically divide it into 16 cross 16 input patch size. Now, remember, smaller patch size typically means that uh, you will have larger number of tokens, larger number of uh, patches overall, which basically means that the transformers uh, sequence length this is basically the sequence length that is passed to the transformer that will be larger right so vitl 16 basically has 16 cross 16 input uh, patches and uh, the sequence length depends on 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 the size of your overall size of your image height and width of the image so how do vision transform models uh, perform so you know, of course remember this is 2020 uh, paper presented in 2020 and uh, um, uh, you see uh, at that time, CNNs were very popular, uh, specifically ResNets and their variants were becoming very popular to model image classification kind of tasks. So, so therefore, they basically compare their three models, the JFT, uh, you know, ImageNet 21K model, the huge, large, and uh, uh, huge and large and base models, and so on, with the two different uh, ResNet variants, so BITL and Noisy Student. Both of them are ResNet variants in that sense. And they compare across several data sets. So ImageNet data set, ImageNet real data set, CIFAR 10, CIFAR 100, Oxford, IIIT pets, uh, Oxford flowers 102, VTAP data set, which in, gen which in turn actually contains 19 different tasks. Right? So, so as you can observe, the you know uh, model VIT huge model with a 14 cross 14 patch size trained pre-trained using JFT actually gives you the best results across most of these tasks. Right. 
So now it is interesting to observe uh, uh, that uh, this particular model just took 2.5 thousand uh, uh, you know, TPU V3 core days. On the other hand, if you really look at other ResNet models, they actually, uh, the baseline ResNet models, they took longer. Okay. So in short, the vision transform models pre-trained on JFT 300 million uh, data set outperform uh, the ResNet based baselines on all of these data sets. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, while taking a significantly lesser amount of compute power. Right? So that's basically that. That is why people have started now using VIT based uh, uh, backbones rather than ResNet backbones for their vision and vision language kind of tasks. Okay. Now, they also measured how well do these models transfer to ImageNet. So in the sense, if you train a model on, let's say, ImageNet 1K or train a model based on ImageNet 21K or JFT 300 million, you know, what is their performance? Uh, as measured on on ImageNet 1K, right? And uh, that's basically top one accuracy. Yeah. So what is observed? And then you know there are these uh, uh, the plots basically represent uh, six different models. The BIT model is the ResNet baseline, and as you can see, there are like multiple points for the BIT model, and these are all variants which have been pre-trained using different data sets and of different sizes and so on. So what you also observe are these other five models, uh, which are basically VIT large, huge, and base models. So what do you observe? You observe that if you basically just pre-train on small ImageNet data set, you basically see that uh, the ResNet kind of model is much better. Okay. Um, and uh, you also observe that these huge models, uh, you know, of course, huge models also have larger circles also. They are not as good as, in fact, the base model or the small or the large model. Okay. But uh, as you actually increase the size of your data set to pre-train the JF to 300 million data set, you observe that, well, the, large, the huge models essentially start uh, becoming better compared to all of the other baselines, ResNet baseline and also base and large models. Okay. So in short, the idea is that large VIT models perform worse than the ResNet models when pre-trained on smaller data sets, but, uh, but they shine when you pre-train them on larger data sets. Larger the data sets, you know, these VIT models really work well. Okay. Now, they also did some other experiments where they tried to compute, uh, where, you know, so for example, this result shows you top one accuracy on the y axis, and on the x axis, it shows you total pre compute, total pre training compute, right? So, and then three kinds of models are compared here the VIT models, the ResNet kind of models, and there are also hybrid models that they compare. So, what are these hybrid models? Well, these hybrid models basically uh, they are transformer based models, but they basically take visual embeddings coming from ResNets as input uh, rather than actually, uh, you know, uh, directly taking patches and then just doing a linear projection. Okay. So, so therefore, hybrid models will take more parameters also in that sense as compared to the standard VIT, uh, 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 compared to the bit, uh, compared to the visual transformer models. Okay. So what can be observed from this plot? And of course, you see multiple ResNets and so on because uh, they differ in terms of their pre-training data or, or how much amount of time you do the pre-training number of epochs and so on. Okay. So, so what do you observe? You observe that larger VIT models, you know, if you look at larger VIT models like this blue guy, well, they overtake smaller ones as the data set grows. So as you basically do more and more compute, you basically observe uh, that uh, not just that the larger models are better here, you know, but you also observe that these larger models start becoming better. In general, the blue ones are above the uh, gray boxes, which basically means that the VIT models are actually better than ResNets. You know, the hybrid models actually turn out to be reasonably good in the beginning, but then the, these uh, these orange pluses. But then, as you increase the overall pre-training compute, you observe that these uh, transform-based uh, visual transform models uh, actually are almost as good as hybrid models with lesser number of parameters or simpler models, essentially. Just take the image patches and pass them as input with a simple uh, dense layer transform. Right? So therefore, you know, uh, the typical visual transform model does not really do this hybrid stuff at all and just does typical, um, typical patch embeddings. So in summary, in this video, I talked about vision transformers. Uh, they match or exceed the accuracy of ResNets on many image classification data sets. They're also relatively cheap to pre-train. And in general, they are now the standard backbone for most of the vision and vision language tasks. If you want to uh, play around with these models, you can go visit uh, the GitHub repo. Hope you liked the video. That's it for, for this video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.